Hello, everybody. Please share, share, share. Um, uh, come on, just a little bit early. I said 5 o'clock syndrome. Come on, just a little bit early. So please share this. I appreciate it. I'm going to share it on my page as soon as it comes up on this page. Hello, hello, everybody. Please share. Got a little bit of updating to give you. Um, and then I wanted to say also, if you're getting tired of uh, all the David E. Taylor stuff, then you know what? You probably don't have a daughter or a son or a family member in the JMMI cult, and you haven't been affected by this person. So um, uh, you can just unfollow me, unfriend me, because I'm not going anywhere, okay? Uh, I am not. Uh, I got away from doing the interviews uh, for right now, but I feel led to get on here today to share with you uh, another woman, okay, from Europe. Um, those of you that follow my story, you know uh, I'm sounding the alarm, and um, I, today I must share with you uh, a voice message I got from uh, someone from Europe. Uh, another a, a woman that was with him several years ago and um, a lot of the same stuff you know uh, with all the women you know he makes he has everybody send them naked pictures and then if you expose him then he's going to send them out and he did this to this this woman from Europe and when she was I listened to her message and um, I put myself right there you know he didn't find me uh, through social media I actually went to his ministry but most of these women, you know, he reached out to them, uh, wanting to be their spiritual father and and them to be his spiritual their their his spiritual daughter, you know. Let's says to so many of them that you know they need to marry a king and and that um. Can't hear you. Oh, you can't hear me. Well, I'm, I'm high. They need to marry a king, and um, why don't you go to the other room and see if you can hear me on there? Yeah, uh, and that um. He wants you to be his wife. And so I have, this isn't just hearsay, y'all. I mean, I'm not just hearsay. I, I'm getting inbox messages from people, screenshots of him saying this. So, I mean, I would not have put, um, I've got the volume up pretty loud, but I'll talk louder. Um, I wouldn't put my, all this time since December 22nd into this if, um, there's not a fan blowing. I don't know. Is it okay? Okay. Um, if it was just... You know, he broke my heart. No, I'm so past that. It, this is bigger than that. This is this has been going on for 18 years, and um, you know, I I reached out to a church that he's going to be he's going to be there tonight, tomorrow night, and Friday night. A church I was with David for 16 months, dating him, a relationship. We either text or talked every day, um, and I tried. I found out now the reason why I was a part of his movement was so I could help expose his whatever he's got going I don't want to call it a ministry and so I tried I really did I I did you know I did I got on here every night pretty much 2018 up into August and uh, promoted the book and then he wanted me to get in places to preach the only church in 16 months that I that said yes to David E. Taylor was Natchez Mississippi and I'm not gonna go through the story I did live earlier but anyway long story short I talked to the pastor a couple of days ago he says he believes everything I said, everything. He says, I think I can help David. And um, I said, but you're okay with him laying hands on your people? And after I told you all these things, and and I just began to weep and cry. In fact, I had to say, listen, Pastor, i got to hang up. I'm crying so hard I can't even finish this conversation. And um, he's come to find out, which he shared with me, that he was from the, the Earl Polk era. And if you guys know about Earl Polk, Earl Polk from Atlanta, God rest his soul, he's dead now, but he would have like a conference, and there'd be like 10 men in the back in his office, and he would have like 10, 12 women back there, and they all picked which one they wanted for the night. So this is where we're coming from with Pastor, Pastor Searcy from Natchez. So now I'm understanding why he's okay with David being at his church tonight, tomorrow night, and Friday night, because, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've been in this church, sung this church maybe three times, um, I thought he was a friend of mine. I thought when I shared the, the the things that were going on that he would say, you know what, we can't. I want to. I gotta protect my sheep. I gotta protect my people. 
And that's really why I wanted to tell him, warn him about what happened. And so then he put on his uh, church page today things when I was there two times promoting David, promoting. You know, that was before that was before I found the truth, before God revealed the truth. I was under David's spell. And yes, he's definitely involved in witchcraft. And I was in that I was in that movement. I was a part of JMMI. So you go and play those things of something. It doesn't even make sense. It's a horrible argument. Uh, play video of me when I was there promoting it. Of course. I mean, I'm not arguing that. That was me. Absolutely, that was me. I was at your church and I was promoting it. But on December 22nd, God began to reveal all the wickedness. Absolutely, birds of a feather flock together. And sometimes preachers can't, they can't confront things that they struggle with. And so, I mean, I don't know the ins and outs of this man. I wasn't that close to them. I just went and ministered there three times at least, three or four times. And uh, so what I want to share with you today, um, I had a lady from Europe. She's not going to come on here, but I'm going to play her um, her recording that she sent me. And I want you all to listen very closely. It's eight minutes long, and I want you to listen to every bit of it. I related to so much of this uh, recording as far as the naked pictures he has, has you make. Uh, I related. This is a woman from Europe, okay? I'm going to play it now. Y'all listen very carefully. Hello, I want to tell my story. Uh, I'm a woman from another country in Europe. I was contacted 2014 by an assistant on JMMI from D David E. Taylor by a messenger. They said that he had a prophecy to give to me about my destiny and wanted me to call in. And I did. They introduced me to the so-called face-to-face movement. And in the end, they asked if I wanted to be a part of this movement and donate. I didn't donate and I and wanted to think about it. I went and I looked at the web page. David E. Taylor started contacting me on Messenger and showed clips from his movement hang on sorry he stopped Hello. hang on y'all I'm gonna move it up just a little bit it won't Hello. I don't know why it stopped I tell my story. hang on y'all so I'm gonna let it come up to where we were but this is a lady from Europe and she uh, was contacted through um, Facebook. I don't through Facebook from Jane Live. So I'm gonna put it stop, but I hope it don't stop again. If it stops again, I'm gonna figure out what's going on. They said that he had a prophecy to give to me about my destiny and wanted me to call in, and I did. They introduced me to the so-called face-to-face movement, and in the end. They asked if I wanted to be a part of this movement and donate. I didn't donate and I and wanted to think about it. I went and I looked at the web page and on the surface it looked okay. David E. Taylor started contacting me on Messenger and showed clips from his movement and we started talking for a couple of months. At that time, I was vulnerable and I was longing for meeting someone to serve God with. I had a dream about me and him serving God together. At that time, I think, allegedly, he ruled me in by his so-called prayers. I started to get feelings for him and I expressed them to him. I thought I was the only one. After that, he responded with kind words first. Then he started to ask me questions about my past sexual encounters that I might have had. I felt unease, and I responded that I thought it was not appropriate to ask these questions. Immediately, he said he was hurt, and he blamed me for putting a limit to that conversation. I felt unease but I continue to have contact with him. Allegedly, I think he prayed that I would become closer to him. 
We started dating through Messenger, something I'd never done before. I asked him to call and called him, but he never called me back or answered my calls. He called me once, but I couldn't answer. He said he loved me all the time, and I believed him. He said all the nice words I seldom have heard anyone say to me before. Then he wanted me to send him inappropriate pictures of myself, Mm -hmm. and unfortunately, I did. And he responded to sexual invite. But immediately after I did this, I felt a conviction and contacted a spiritual leader that said that I needed to repent, and he prayed for me. I repented, and he prayed deliverance over me. Today I know that I was open to this because I have gone through sexual abuse before as a child and was not free. But today I'm free. I asked David E. Taylor to erase the photos. He said he did and asked for forgiveness. He continued to approach me sexually. But in all this, the Holy Spirit started to reveal to me how he lived behind closed doors, looking at pornography, allegedly, chasing women and lie and cheat. I didn't know it was so many, maybe five or six, that I I got to know he had approached via messenger. I confronted him and he said, it wasn't true. He spoke dirty language many times. When I said he had to stop and it wasn't right, he said that I needed to repent because he was God's general. But I kept getting revelation from the Holy Spirit that he would be exposed. And I told him, 2015. I asked if he erased the photos. He continued to say yes. But at one time when he was angry after I confronted him, when he talked dirty language and called me names and sent me the photos, then he sent me the photos to me that he said that he erased. Mm -mm. That broke my heart. And it, it was over in my heart, even if I had feelings for him. He threatened me. If I exposed him, he would tell that I sent the photos without him being involved and pushing me. He spoke to me like he spoke to the other women that I've heard. Dirty language. I gave him $1,000, and after I had done that, he came in a dream saying that I would give to GMMI. Today I know it was manipulation, control, and witchcraft in operation. The Holy Spirit warned me many times when he prayed curses against me. But my spiritual leader prayed over me 2018, and I got delivered and healed and are under a restoration period now. I didn't know that it was so many women victims, including you, Vicky. I knew maybe five or six he had approached over messengers. Not that he had spiritual daughters that he slept with. He also said in the end of our contact, 2017, that I would die in two years' time. God is working through you, Vicky, and I bless you. What you are doing, I bless. And I bless Hank and his wife. You have ministered to me many times during this this month. You have helped me work through things. And my heart goes out to all the women that have been and are abused right now by him. I want to say to them that what the Lord said to me in 2016, you are worth being treated like a princess. I never met David E. Taylor. I don't know what happened. Yeah. No, it's, it won't let me. It won't let me. Hang on. Let me see where we are.
become closer to him, and I believed him to sexual invite. I'm not sure where we are. All the time, and I believed him. He said all the nice words I felt before as a child. I felt a conviction Do we hear and contacted a spiritual leader that said that I needed to repent, and he prayed for me. I repented. I gotta go a little further. He Sorry, shut off. Approach me. Here we go. Was, it right. called me names and sent me the photos. Then he sent me the photos Sorry. to me that he said that he erased. That broke my heart. And it, it was over in my heart, even if I had feelings for him. He threatened me if I exposed him. He would tell that I sent the photos without him being involved and pushing me. Let me go up a little bit further because I think we're, we are heard that. You, Vicky. Okay, here we go. I knew maybe five or six he had things that okay, God we'll working now. through you, Vicky. And I bless you. What you are doing, I bless. And I bless Hank and his wife. You have ministered to me many times mm -hmm. during this this month you have helped me work through things and my heart goes out to Thank all the women all that have been and are abused right now by him I want to say to them that what the Lord said to me in 2016 you are worth being treated like a princess Amen. I never met David e. Taylor personally only through messenger he wanted me to come but I couldn't, and I thank God for that. Thank God. I wish everyone involved in GMMI get free and leave and get into their true yes. destiny yes. and experience the true love of God. I have forgiven David E. Taylor, and I hope his soul will be saved yes. and that he repent. And I wish that all the victims he has abused will be healed. This is a higher level spirit of witchcraft, control yes. and manipulation. Yes. And God wants to help all that are in this situation in, at GMMI. And I say to them, don't be afraid to leave. God no. wants to help you come into your true destiny. And this is what I had to say. This was my story. Be blessed, everyone. And you guys wonder why I'm, I'm still pushing, I'm still sharing, I'm still, I'm still exposing. This is a woman from Europe that he reached out to on inter internet. Had her send naked pictures just like he did me and all the other women. This has got to stop. This has got to stop. This is absolutely horrendous. And I'm sounding the alarm. And I want to say like I did earlier this morning when I came on, if you're tired of seeing stuff about David E. Taylor, well, Vicky, vengeance is mine. Yes, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Yes, absolutely. David, is, it's going to stop. But I've got to do what God said to do. For 18 years, he's been doing this, and he's still doing it, even this at this very moment. He's, he'll be in certain pockets of people on Facebook, and then he's going to reach out to other pockets in different places. And so that's why we're going to continue to sound the alarm. Uh, I have so many. I have more women that are making actual videos. Uh, women, they're, they're getting them together right now. Uh, some of these women, David's going to be very surprised of 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 what they that they're actually coming out, because um, we we're not I'm I'm not going to spare nothing. I am I'm putting it all out there because I want you women to be protected, marriages to be protected. Um, it's just absolutely absolutely. When I heard her her um, her message, it just tore me up, and uh, she allowed me to share it with you all, and. Um, I want you guys to continue to pray. This is actually tonight, tomorrow, and uh, Friday night. David will be in Natchez, Mississippi at New Hope. So if you live in Natchez, you need to drive by there and, and stretch your hands out for the people. If you live in Natchez, I'm, I'm, I'm praying for the people in Natchez. You have a warlock that is in your city. He's demonic. He has destroyed more marriages than you would even imagine. He has done more wickedness in the body of Christ. He is a cancer 
And um, let me tell you something. Some of y'all don't know. He actually believes he's Jesus' best friend, okay? He, if you talk to any of his people in the movement, they will tell you that da Jesus loves David more than he loves me. They will tell you that because that's his best friend. He believes that you will not get the keys to the kingdom unless you go through him because Jesus appeared to him and told him. That's why it's so cultish. Now that I'm outside of it looking in, it never really hit me, but that's really what he believes, that he is, he is something very, very special, very cultish, very, um, um, if you leave there, just like the lady said, he told her she's going to have, you know, expose them. She's going to have, she's going to die in two years where she had, she's still alive. He told me if I would expose him and go public that I would get cancer. Um, it's witchcraft and it's not of God and it's not everything of, that's not of Jesus shall come down. And so, um, Deja Angelo there. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's why I'm going to continue to expose it. And I want to share that with you. I'm going to uh, be on with, um, Hank at 8 o'clock tonight for some worship and some word. And then also I'm going to be on, um, I'm, I'm waiting for a call from Larry Reed. We're going to discuss this and I'm going to go live, uh, because Larry Reed has a very, very big audience radio station in Natchez. I'll be dealing with them in the next few days. I already talked to the newspaper in Natchez. Um, they're looking into this. So we are, I love Natchez. Natchez isn't far from my hometown. I used to go there and just hang out there. Even if I wasn't ministering anywhere and Natchez, you need to know what is in your area, what type of spirit is in your area. And um, if you're a pastor from Natchez, I would love for you to inbox me. I would love to talk to you. Any pastors, concerned pastors about your city, your sheep, your wife, your daughter, you need to inbox me as soon as possible, okay? I would love to talk to you, okay? All right. All right. God bless you guys. Yes, he messed with the wrong woman. He didn't, he underestimated my platform. He, in fact, he told me before I went public, he said, no one will listen to you, Vicki. I had the text. He said, you are a zero. He told me I was a zero, Z-E-R-O, and no one will listen to you. He was trying to talk me out of exposing him. And so a lot of these women um, never would come forward because of this, because uh, of the control manipulation pictures that he had us take. All of our stories match. That's what's in amazing. Our stories match. We, we, we ask all kinds of questions to each other, and they all match. It's amazing. So, anyway, I'll be back on here later tonight with Hank. Actually, we'll, we're going to go from his page, the ministry of Hank Duckerson. I'll share it on this page. And also, I will share when I go live with Larry Reed uh, uh, on his program. We will share it right here. Okay. We're sounding the alarm. Pimps in the pulpit. It's got to stop. Clergy abuse, it's got to stop. We got They got to stop sleeping with their spiritual daughters and think it's okay and lying to them and telling them that they're going to be their, their wife. It's, it's got to stop. 2019 is the year. We made a lot of headway in the last, in January, and we will to this month and every month. God is moving. Don't ever think God is not moving. If you don't see things happening, listen, God is moving. So I love you guys. Thank you for being my family. You guys are awesome. Thank you for the prayers and all the intercessory teams. I'm going to tell you something. Every day I've got somebody to say, listen, my intercessory team is praying. We're standing with you, Vicki. We're standing for righteousness. You know, when you're on the side of righteousness, you're going to win. It's a war. Absolutely, it's a war. It's a war against unrighteousness and righteousness. That's, that's what the war is. If you want to choose uh, unrighteousness, then okay. But if you want to stand up for what's right, speak out for what's right, stand up for the right thing, you need to be on the side of righteousness, okay? Love you guys. See you back on here at 8 o'clock for sure. With uh, I'll share from Hank's page. And also, we will be on with Larry Reed. I'm waiting for him to call me, and we're going to discuss that. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna expose this thing. Natchez, we love you. We're, we, we, we want you to know the truth. And you, we need, you need to know what's in your city, okay? God bless you. Bye-bye.